So recently I decided to start putting together a series of video tutorials and tips and tricks around the Ultimate Brush Toolbox. So I reached out on Instagram and I asked, what are some of the topics, some of the subject matters that you'd like to cover? One of the first responses I received was how to blend colors. So I've put together this video of my top five methods for blending colors in Procreate. I think these methods will apply to Photoshop or Affinity as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The first method that I want to show you is blending with just brushes alone. So I'm going to be using the brushes from the oil set from the Ultimate Brush Toolbox. And I'm going to link that set below if you want to take a look at it. But most of the brushes within this set, because they're made to mimic oil, they already have a bit of inherent blending, meaning that when you paint one color over another, it will pick up a little bit of that color underneath and sort of smudge and blend that together. So let's start with, I'm going to go with this uh, textured mix and I've got an orange color and I'm just going to put down a shape here. Now I'm going to get a blue and as I come back over the orange, you can see that it smudges or blends a little bit of the orange into the blue. So if I grab the orange again and then come back over that, I'm going to get a nice gradient or transition blend between the two colors. Now I would probably use this method the most when I'm blocking in some initial color on a sketch. So for example, if I have this sketch here, I'm going to take this blue, let's get a little bit different brush. Let's grab this one. So if I started to block in some of the colors on this sketch, as the edges of the two shapes touch, they'll blend together just a bit. and it's going to create some really soft edges. So if I turn the sketch off, you can see that there's some really soft edges happening where the orange and blue meet. Now the next method is going to be a combination of the brush tool and the smudge or blend tool. So if I put down my initial shapes of color again, And this time I'm going to use the smudge tool and I'm going to use the thumb smudge, which is a brush. There's a couple brushes in this set that are intended to be used with the smudge tool. So if I use that and go back and forth between these two colors, I'm going to get a little bit more of a smoother blend. So now we've got blue and this really smooth um, transition to the orange and it's creating this nice neutral color there in the middle. So I would use this method for really doing some fine blending between my colors. So if I wanted these colors to really blend together in a real smooth transition, that's where I'm going to use the blend tool to get that really smooth transition between the two. So you can see that this is this is creating much more of a neutral tone than it is up here. So this was the blend tool and this was method one with the inherent blending in the brushes. So the next method is going to be for a little bit more specific situations, but it does come in handy. So if I lay down some color again and I'm going to switch to my blue. And I'm going to go to my layer and I'm going to turn, I'm going to tap the, uh, the little thumbnail and I'm going to turn on alpha lock. And then I'm going to come back over with my blue. So what alpha lock does is it creates, or it, it's only allowing me to paint within the shape of what's on the layer. So I don't know since it's kind of like creating a layer mask. Now, this is also really handy to use with 
uh, different art effects. So if I take some of the um, the brush effects from the Ultimate Art Effects toolbox, let's try taking one of these. Okay, and if I wanted to, let's actually let's apply a couple of them. Let's try this one as well. Okay, now if I turn on alpha lock for this layer and come back with the blue, let's use let's use the smooth mover here. Scale it down. So now I'm just applying paint into this uh, brush effect, into this artifact. So it looks like multiple colors. There's this nice transition within the effect shape. So it maintains the texture and creates a real nice uh, smooth gradient. I would use this method in a couple of different situations. So if we had maybe we wanted to add a little bit of a lighter tone to the edge of this blue shape along the bird's wing there, I might turn on alpha lock for my initial blocking in layer, choose a lighter blue. And I'm gonna choose a sharper edge brush. Let's try this one. And just apply a little bit of blue or lighter blue along the edge. Also, if we wanted to start adding in a little bit of Artifacts to this painting. Let's get a lighter orange. Now we could take the original orange, turn on alpha lock here, and we could blend. Oops. we could blend those brush strokes in. Okay, so that's a couple different uses for blending with alpha lock. So this next method is probably the one that I use the most and it involves layering. And most of the time I'm painting with a transparent brush or a transparent effect and the colors are building up on top of one another and they're sort of automatically blending. This method is a little bit more intuitive to me because I don't necessarily have to manually blend and worry about um, how things are blended together. So for example, if I take a brush, I'm gonna use this little softy and I'm gonna turn the opacity down and make a light stroke here and get the blue and come over that area. I'm getting the same sort of blending effect, but it's one transparent layer over another. So I'm still getting that nice neutral tone there in the middle. Now, another method or another use for this is with the, the, uh, the artifacts. And let's go back to those. So these already have a level of transparency, especially these here that have this uh, thin glaze mix so let's try that. So if I apply one here and then another one over it, let's get the blue and size it down. So now these two are blending together because it's one transparent layer over another again. So I can also come in here and I can sample that neutral tone and I can grab another one. And apply that, sample another color, grab another one, and apply that. And so I'm starting to build up some uh, opacity and these layers are blending together. So let's, let's add another blue layer over that. So that they're starting to blend together and create this really nice texture and this really nice uh, blend. So let me show you an example of that in use. 
So this is a painting, and this is a little bit more of a watercolor style, but it's very transparent. A lot of the sketch is showing through, and the uh, the blends are all happening from layering colors, layering washes, and the most opaque part of the painting is in the darks, in the details here, here, and then in the light areas. So there's a little bit of an opaque sort of white yellow for all the highlights, but all the blends and everything that's happening here was created from just layering multiple uh, transparent brush strokes and effects. So if we go back to our sketch here and we start to apply some of these more transparent effects, we might drop something here for orange, kind of move it into place, and then let's get a blue. And let's try this one. I'm going to drop it on a new layer so I can move it around. So we need to scale that down. So now I'm starting to get, there's some blending happening, but there's also a bit of texture that's happening here in this transition between those two effects. So I might position those and move those around and the blend is just happening more intuitively, more naturally. So this last method is one that I use quite a bit as well, but it's usually more in a final stage for the painting when I'm making some color adjustments and some hue shifts um, in the color. So it's uh, it involves using an airbrush with a really light opacity. So let's go ahead and add back our uh, paint areas, get the blue back in there. Okay, so I've got some color in and now I want to add a little bit of a blended, or I want to want to shift the hues just a little bit. So I'm going to grab a brush from the Ultimate Brush Toolbox Airbrush set, and I've got the precision tip, which is the first brush. I'm going to turn the opacity down, and I'm going to grab this sort of blue-green color, and just very lightly just sort of shift the colors here just a little bit and it's uh, still blending. It's still like a method that I would consider blending, but I'm just slightly shifting some color areas. So if we take a look at our sketch, we might want to take a little bit of maybe uh, yellow in here. So let's try to grab a lighter yellow because maybe there's a highlight right here. And let me size the brush down some. Whoops, get on the layer. Okay, so I'm just gonna shift the orange a little bit more towards yellow, but that orange underneath is still visible because the airbrush is so light and transparent. All right, I wanted to give you another quick example of that one in action. And I'm on a layer above everything else. And let's just say I wanted to shift this portion down here a little bit more towards green. So I've got that same airbrush precision tip, the opacity is turned down. And let's just shift a little bit of that towards green. And then let's take our really bright orange and maybe add a little bit of warmth into this shadow area. And I really like the transition happening right here between that red and green. Okay, so that's just a quick example of how I would blend with a really light airbrush. Now, another question that I received was how do you maintain texture while blending. So how do you get paint down and start to blend it together and still maintain all of the texture? So the way I do that is a lot of my textures are on top of the paint layers. So for example, this right here is uh, texture layers. This is from the Ultimate Canvas Creator. So there is a canvas texture and there is a paint texture. So that's what this looks like with those 
uh, those layers turned off. So paint texture, which is a lot of brush strokes, and canvas texture. Now, if I wanted to paint above those, I would create a new layer. Let's say I was gonna paint with thicker paint. And I could paint above that and start to hide some of that texture and make it look like the paint is a bit thicker in that area. So that's my favorite way of adding texture and also maintaining texture in a painting as I work. So I hope this video gives you some new methods for blending colors. And remember that there's no hard rule on how to do so. So you may take one or two of these methods and incorporate them into your own process. If you'd like to submit some ideas or suggestions on some upcoming videos, please feel free to do so by sending me an email or by dropping a comment below. And in the meantime, if you need help or you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always around and I'm always happy to help.